Welcome to the Pegasus Learning Platform. Pegasus is your home for clinical simulation and learning resources. This presentation may be used for content overview and clinical competency and will cover the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system can be broken down into two parts, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems. The sympathetic system is a response to a threat. A threat could be external, an internal threat like hypoglycemia, that's a threat, a real threat or a perceived threat. So fear could be a real threat, something you're really afraid of and it's a real threat to you, or if you're perceiving something as a threat, even if it's not, it's still going to elicit the sympathetic response. This is a stressful state. It's the fight or flight response. It's also called the adrenergic system because it's run by catecholamines, these neurotransmitters, epinephrine and norepinephrine, which we used to call adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now you have beta receptors throughout your whole body. You have them in your eyes, in your lungs, in your vessels, in your heart urinary system, digestive system, your bladder, your uterus, you have them through your whole body. And when you go into the sympathetic state, um, you're going to release these catecholamines that will react with these beta receptors to cause a response to get your body ready to fight something or run away from this threat. And that's what we get when we elicit the sympathetic response. Your pupils are going to dilate so you can take advantage of any available light. Your airway expands so you can take in more oxygen to give your body, to give your cells the oxygen it needs to run from something or fight it. Your respirations go up. Your heart rate goes up to move that oxygenated blood to the cells throughout your body. Your blood pressure goes up. Your urinary system actually goes down. Not a good time to pee if you're running for your life. Digestion goes down. The digestive system will actually slow down because right now you're trying to run for your life or fight for your life. So that's actually going to slow down. And salivation is the first stage of digestion, so that's going to go down as well. That's why you get a dry mouth when you're nervous. Now your blood glucose will go up. Now it's over to the side because it's not really the neurotransmitter, but it is a response of the sympathetic state because your body needs oxygen to run from a threat or fight a threat, but it also needs glucose. So it will go up when you're threatened. Now let's talk about the parasympathetic state. This is a peaceful state. It's the rest and digest response. It's the cholinergic system because it's run by a neurotransmitter, acetylcholine. Our pupils will constrict on this side. Now, I don't mean they're going to get pinpoint. What I mean is they dilated over there when we were in the sympathetic state. So to go back to normal, they actually have to constrict. But if you take a medication that elicits the parasympathetic response, well, you can see why you would have pupil constriction. The airway actually constricts over here as well. Again, I don't mean that you can't breathe on this side. What I mean is when you were in the sympathetic state, your airway expanded. To go back to normal, it has to constrict. But if you take a medication that elicits this response, you can see how you might have more airway constriction. Your respirations are going down. They increased when you were in the sympathetic state. Parasympathetic, they're going to go back down. Heart rate goes back down. Blood pressure goes back down. Urinary system actually goes up. Now that you're not fighting for your life, you can actually kick in the urinary system, digest it. It's the same. The digestive system goes back up and salivation increases when you're in the parasympathetic state. Your blood glucose, though, it's not going to go back down just because you're in a peaceful state. So if you're a diabetic or you have a diabetic patient, when they're threatened or they're scared, their glucose is going to go up. It's not going to go back down just because they're not threatened anymore. Their body's going to have to deal with that excess glucose. There are a few terms that will help us understand the system a little bit better. Agonist is something that will help and an antagonist is something that will block. Now, an agonist that helps, that doesn't mean it's inherently helpful. What it means is it's going to help whatever's going on happen even more. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad. 
it doesn't mean inherently good. An antagonist blocks. Sometimes you want something blocked, sometimes you don't. So one is not inherently good and the other is not inherently bad. You just need to see that if you have an agonist, it's going to help whatever's going on happen even more. If you have an antagonist, it's going to block that response. Now let's see how understanding the system can help us a little bit more. Let's start with a beta blocker. What does a beta blocker do? It blocks the beta. So put your pencil on beta. And we're going to move over to the other side. So we put our pencil on blood pressure. What happens to the blood pressure on that side? It goes down. And that's how a beta blocker lowers your blood pressure. A beta blocker blocks the beta. So we're going to put our pencil on beta. And we're going to move over to the airway on the other side. What happens to the airway over there? It constricts. So that's why you would need to use caution if you use a beta blocker with somebody who has asthma. It can cause airway constriction. Please note that although the sympathetic response can cause an increase in blood glucose, a person with diabetes mellitus may have a sympathetic response, such as an increased heart rate, tremors, etc., when they have a hypoglycemic reaction. However, they will need simple carbohydrates to correct the low blood glucose level. What does a beta blocker do? It blocks the beta. Well, we know that hypoglycemia is a threat and your patient who's hypoglycemic will have adrenergic response. Now we expect the glucose to raise on the sympathetic side. However, a diabetic may not be able to do that. Somebody with hypoglycemia, they rely on that simple carbohydrate to raise their glucose because they're unable to do that. However, they should have the other adrenergic response that tells them, hey, we have a problem. You need to get some sugar, some glucose. So if we give our patient who's a diabetic a beta blocker, let's see what happens. We're going to put our pencil on the beta or the adrenergic, and then we're going to block that side with a beta blocker. What happens on that side? Well, this is the peaceful or the parasympathetic system. They're not going to have that adrenergic response. So you have to use beta blockers with caution with a patient with diabetes mellitus because it blocks that adrenergic response and they won't feel themselves go low. Let's apply what we know to medication administration. So let's say the physician or healthcare providers prescribed a beta adrenergic antagonist orange, 25 milligrams. Well, we don't know what this medication is. We've never heard of it before. So a color stands for medication we've never heard of. I've never heard of the beta adrenergic antagonist orange but I know an antagonist is going to block and I know what the beta adrenergic system is. So would we use this medication to treat hypertension? Well, I've never heard of this medication before, but I can figure some things out. What I'm going to do is remember it's an adrenergic antagonist, so it's going to block the adrenergic system. So put your pencil on beta or adrenergic. We're going to go to beta and move it over to the blood pressure because it's an antagonist to the beta side. Well, the blood pressure went down, so yes, we're going to use that to treat hypertension. Would we use this beta adrenergic antagonist orange to treat asthma? Don't know. Never heard of it before. So I'm going to put my pencil on beta or adrenergic and I'm going to move over to the airway on the other side. Well, this causes airway constriction. So no, I would not use this medication as a treatment for asthma. Let's try this with another medication. This is the beta adrenergic agonist blue 25 milligrams. I've never heard of the medication blue but I know what the beta adrenergic system is and I know an agonist is going to help the system do whatever it does. So would I use this medication to treat hypertension? Remember, this is an adrenergic agonist, so it's going to help the system do whatever it does. I'm gonna put my pencil on beta or you can put it on adrenergic and I'm gonna to move to the blood pressure. So I see over here, the blood pressure goes up. So no, I would not use that as a treatment for hypertension. Would I use it to treat asthma? Again, I'm going to put my pencil on beta or adrenergic and move to the airway. And in this case, the airway expands. So yes, I would use that medication to treat asthma. We've already determined that we would use this medication to treat asthma, but we would not use it for hypertension. So now we need to determine maybe two side effects of this medication. We can put our pencil on beta or adrenergic and move to the blood pressure. And I'm going to see that over here, 
well, the blood pressure goes up. So a side effect would be hypertension. I'm going to put my pencil on beta or adrenergic and see what happens with the heart rate. Well, that goes up as well. So tachycardia would also be a side effect of this medication. Two nursing interventions could be monitor the heart rate and monitor the blood pressure. Did you know albuterol is actually classified as an adrenergic agonist? So is terbutaline. We know anti means against. So let's see what happens when we give an anticholinergic. Put our pencil on cholinergic and move to the pupils on the other side. So over there, our pupils dilate. So that's why when we give an anticholinergic, it can be a little bit hard for our patient to see. Their vision becomes a little blurry. Put your pencil on cholinergic and move to urinary on the other side. Well, the urinary system slows down over there, so it can make it a little bit more difficult for them to pee. Put your pencil on cholinergic and move to salivation on the other side. Well, that's why they get a dry mouth. They can't spit, so they can't see, they can't pee, they can't spit. Put your pencil on cholinergic and move to digestion on the other side. Well, the digestive system goes down, so they can't see, they can't pee, they can't spit, they can't Now here's another medication we haven't heard of, the anticholinergic green 25 milligrams. We know anti means against, so would we give this to treat urinary retention? Put your pencil on cholinergic and move to the urinary system. Well over there the urinary system slows down, so no, we wouldn't use this to treat urinary retention. Would we use this to treat nocturnal enuresis or bedwetting? Put your pencil on urinary system move over, that goes down, so yes, we would use it to treat bedwetting. We'll try this with another medication, the anticholinergic pink. The color stands in for medication we've never heard of. Let's see what we can figure out. Would we use this medication to treat dumping syndrome? Well, put your pencil on cholinergic and move to the digestive system. Well, over here, the digestive system slows down. So yes, we would use this to treat dumping syndrome because it would slow down the digestive system so they could get some more nutrients from their food. Would we use this to treat GERD? Put your pencil on cholinergic and again, move to the digestive system and we see that it slows down. So actually, no, we would not use this to treat GERD. It's helpful to use this information when you study because these concepts are used throughout your textbook. For example, with the endocrine system, the hypothalamus controls the peripheral autonomic nervous system, the adrenal medulla secretes catecholamines, um, a pheochromocytoma is catecholamine producing tumor, the symptoms, treatments, and nursing interventions, understanding hypoglycemia causes adrenergic responses, beta blockers can cause hypoglycemia unawareness. You can also see it with the cardiac system with stimulation of the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems and what it affects, the effects of stress, because you release epi, that this has on Raynaud's or Berger's disease, medications such as ephedrine, which is an alpha and beta adrenergic agonist, the GI system meds to give or avoid for GERD, hyenal hernia, dumping syndrome, etc., or the urinary system meds to give to avoid or avoid for urinary retention or benign prostatic hypertrophy or nocturnal enuresis. Please note that this is a brief overview only. This presentation may be used for review and continuing education, and the autonomic nervous system involves more than this presentation covers. Thank you for your attention to this resource hosted on the Pegasus Learning Platform.